Have you ever used a website or an API and you encountered a very cryptic error, something went wrong or internal server error? Well, that probably happened because the website or API didn't properly implement custom error handling. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up custom exception handling in Fast API. What I'm going to use to show this is SkyPulse. It's a simple weather API that can get the weather for any city in the world as long as it's in the database. And currently the database is not very large. Before we start, if you want to learn how to design an API like this from scratch, take a look at my free design guide. This teaches you the seven steps that I take whenever I design a new piece of software. Go to iron.code slash design guide, enter your email address, and you get it via email. Python already has a whole hierarchy of exceptions that you can use, but sometimes it makes more sense to use a custom hierarchy of exceptions that still needs to be part of Python's main exception hierarchy. So when you define an exception class, in this case, I have a sky pulse API error, which is the base exception that we're going to use for all possible errors that our API can raise. Then we also need to inherit from the Python exception class. That way it fits well within Python's exception framework. In this case, the only thing I did in the SkyPulse API error is that there is a message and the name that's being stored into variables that's part of the exception object. And there we already have our custom exception. But of course, now that you have this, you can take this a step further by filling out the hierarchy because this is kind of generic and still very cryptic. So I still have a surface error, which is the general error, but then I also have more specific types of errors like entity does not exist error or entity already exists error, invalid operation error, authentication failed error. You can add many more of these different error types depending on what your application does. And in this case, I haven't really provided any additional details, but you can also pass custom data to each of these different exceptions. For example, the invalid operation error could have a custom instance variable that contains the operation that you try to run so that we know where the problem is. The reason to have this Skype Pulse API error at the top is that not only have we now defined a custom hierarchy for our API, we also provide a way of catching all errors related to the SkyPulse domain. So if we have some code that interacts with the SkyPulse API code, we could catch any SkyPulse API error so that we're sure that if there is an issue, we are catching it without having to catch any exception. Also, we might in the future add a second hierarchy with other types of errors, and then we can handle those things separately. In FastAPI, when an exception is raised by default, Fast API's default error handler takes care of it, but you can replace that by a custom error handler as well. So this is the main file of my API where I also do things like adding the routers, etc. So part of the main file is adding the routers like you see here. But another thing that I've done here is I've created a function create exception handler that gets a status code and an initial detail and that handles particular types of exceptions. So in this case, we expect a sky pulse API error, and it's going to turn that into a JSON respond by looking at things like the message. And then what you can do in fast API is add exception handlers for specific classes. So for each of these specific types of errors, I add an exception handler, like entity doesn't exist, invalid operation, etc., etc. In the exception handling code, I return a JSON response and I also use a logger. Now, of course, you have to be careful here that you're not returning any sensitive data. So you might want to filter out things like passwords and email addresses. So now let's take a look at how this works. So here I have one of the routers. This is the router to get weather information. So there's the standard CRUD operations. So let's see what happens if we raise an error. So this get request, I'm going to raise a service error that the service is unavailable. And that's the message. And I can also give this a name, like so. Let me save this. And now let me go to the documentation. So this is one of the nice things about FastAPI that we get automatically a Swagger UI, which is really nice. So let me go to the particular GET request, that's API v1 weather. And then let's try that. So now I'm going to try this and then execute. And now we're going to see that we get an error, internal service error, and there we have the detail service is unavailable. So that's the power of custom exceptions. And the nice thing about the exception handler that I created is that it also logs the error. So if I go to my 
Docker image that's currently running the service, you can see that I get the error right here. So I can also see it back in the logs. So overall, if you spend a bit of time setting up your custom exceptions, it's going to be a way better experience for the users of your API. And it's not that hard to do as you've seen in this example. Now I've put all the example code in the examples repository so you can take a look and copy paste whatever you need. Finally, when you use these types of custom exceptions, make sure you remember that A, you create specific exceptions and not too generic ones. Specific is better because they give more precise information. You can add data to your exception so you can do something with the data in your exception handling code. And finally, make sure you raise exceptions as early as possible because if there is some sort of error in your system, you want to catch that error as early on as possible and provide that information back to the user and not let that error propagate through your system, resulting in maybe even worse situation. That's also called applying the fail fast principle. If you want to learn more about how to properly apply fail fast, check out this video next. Thanks for watching and see you soon.